Welcome to the station crew. Enjoy your stay. The scientist in Space Station 14 is tasked with earning research points. The research points will then be used to unlock technologies, which unlock items. They range from fun, quirky items to very valuable to the station as a whole. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to assume that you're a scientist who has spawned in science. Now, there are several rooms you want to get acquainted with. Every station will have a room like this room. The room will have your proto lathe, your auto lathe, and the R&D computer, as well as the circuit imprinter. Every station varies, but some stations will also have the test tech disk terminal here as well, which I will get into every one of these machines soon. There will also be a stack of materials next to the lathe because you need the materials in these lathes to operate them. The R&D computer, or R&D console, is the first thing you're going to want to take a look at just to get an idea. This is the backbone of your entire job. You'll earn research points, which will be shown up here, to unlock different technologies. Underneath that, your main discipline, which will be the final tier you will unlock, which is tier 3. And then there's the four disciplines. And they are all going to be tier 1 when you start, and you'll have no points, so you can't buy any of them. Your research screen will not look like this. The game, every single round, will randomize which tier 1s you can get. The tier 1s don't change, but there might not be industrial engineering, for example. It might be advanced power cells. Every time you research a technology, all the other ones will randomly change. So if you want surgical tools and industrial engineering, well, that's too bad. It's going to cycle, and you might end up having to spend more points because of it. How do you earn points? There are two ways to earn points in science. Number one is the safest, not necessarily the most efficient, but it's definitely the safest. And most guaranteed way of getting points is researching artifacts. Alien artifacts are either items you can pick up in your hand, which I just activated that one. They're items you pick up in your hand and can put back down, or you can drag them and they can't be picked up. This one is an alien artifact that can be picked up. In order to learn anything about this, you need to go to the analysis console and you need to make sure the artifact is on top of the artifact analyzer. Simply just press scan and you have to wait one minute to learn what the stimulus and effects are of the artifact. So now that the minute has passed, we can go back up to the console and we will notice the new stimulus and reaction. In order to make this node activate, you need to fulfill the stimulus. There's a bunch of stimuli in the game. I'm not going to explain every single one in this introduction, and the fun of being a scientist is figuring out yourself. For this one, sonic vibrations means you need to play some form of musical instrument. It could be any type of musical instrument. It doesn't have to be a specific one, like you can find a harmonica all the way up to a synthesizer, and that will work. And the reaction is environmental disruption, and that can mean like opening doors, or it can be like temperature changes, and either way, you're going to learn these naturally as you go on. Also, while I'm here, I'll explain the depth and edges. There's an in-game guide for science artifact reports. Depth is the distance from the starting node, depth zero. This is a good shorthand for the value and danger of node. Edges, the amount of nodes that are connected to the current node. Calculate the total number of nodes as well as organize a map of their connections. So, it is always worth printing out a little report of where you're at. So with depth one, edge four, that lets me know there are many more possibilities with this artifact. Artifacts will eventually cycle back to already completed nodes, making your, which will just essentially stall your research. So anyway, enough dilly-dallying, let's activate this one. So let's just say I have a harmonica. In order to activate it, all I have to do is go up to it and play music. And... The environmental disruption threw me against the wall and actually hurt me and ripped up some tiles, but we have activated it. And now we need to scan it to figure out what's up next. Every single time you successfully complete a node, the artifact will become worth more points. And again, you need these points to research technology, so I will show you what happens next. We have successfully moved on to depth zero, edge one. This is the origin node of the artifact, and that is very helpful to know. This one is physical trauma, and the reaction is cerebral influence. Cerebral influence means nothing. Physical trauma means you just beat the shit out of it. But I'm not going to do this because I'm just trying to make an example. So now what that means by current value is 11,000. If you extract it, you'll earn those points at the R&D computer. And now we can research something. So let's just say we want surgical tools. 
Unlocking surgical tools means that we can now craft every single one of those items in the list, and you can hover over it to figure out what you actually discovered. This brings me to the lace. So now that we have actually unlocked things to craft, for example, we unlocked a scalpel. Let's make a scalpel. So if you get to the proto lathe and you see this, you need to just click the sync button. And there are all the things we can craft now. These are very simple to craft, they just require steel. In order to craft at the proto lathe, you just get the materials and you left click the materials into the lathe. And then you'll even see the amount at the bottom. So if I want scalpels, you just click on it. By the way, 100 steel is one piece of steel, and that's true for every other material. And there you go, there is the scalpel. The scalpel has been made. So that is an example of unlocking a technology and using it to produce items. The second way to obtain research points is through anomalies. There are two ways anomalies can spawn. One is through the anomaly generator, which requires 15 plasma per charge to generate an anomaly. The other way is through a random event. So obviously you're going to want to rely on the generator itself. Plasma is rather expensive, but it's oftentimes hard to get your hands on a lot of them, but cargo if they're doing well, we'll make enough money that you could, they can buy you plasma with no problem. Science and cargo have a pretty tight relationship where you sell, you give them the old artifacts to sell, and then they keep buying you stuff to keep researching. I mean, the whole station's interconnected, but that's a different problem. The two tools you are absolutely required to have for an, an artifact is an anomaly scanner and an ape, and they are normally found in the same room. If not, the anomaly scanner is in your locker. You also will require a wrench, which you can find basically anywhere. So, let's just generate an anomaly. You'll get a message in chat saying an anomaly has been generated. Anomalies can generate on any single tile across the entire space station. So they can be extremely hard to find, but people will often call them out in common radio, so keep an eye out for that. Anomalies are rather dangerous. If you don't find them quickly, they can go into a state called supercritical where they can cause major damage. So what we're going to do is we're going to go find it and move on from there. So I have located the anomaly. This is an anomaly known as the gravity anomaly. It will slowly pull in things and emit radiation in a large area. The amount of radiation it emits is depending on its severity. In order to find out severity, you take your anomaly scanner and simply left click it to scan it. Remember, I also mentioned that you should bring your ape along because without higher levels of tech, the ape is required to interact with the anomaly directly. So, in order to affect this anomaly directly, one thing I recommend for a gravity anomaly is pull all nearby objects away from it. You don't want anything interfering with the ape, and you don't want anything getting sucked in that doesn't need to get sucked in. So I just quickly dragged everything dangerous away. Now you're going to want to get your ape lined up to shoot at the anomaly. Basically, the ape is just a big cannon. So get it to aim at it, wrench it down in place, and if you right-click the ape, you can select the types of particles. Now, if you look here, there's three types of particles. Danger, unstable, and containment. Zeta particles will increase the severity directly. Unstable will increase the anomaly state, aka it will go from stable to growing. And containment will kill the anomaly. Or just prevent it from growing. So, I want to stop this one from growing. So, let's shoot it with some epsilon types. All you do is swap it over and left click to turn it on. And now it is immediately stable, meaning that the severity will not grow when it pulses. When it pulses, it will do its secondary effect, where this one will just throw everything away. For this specific anomaly, I highly recommend that you get a, a hazmat suit because of the radiation. Now, the second part is, now that it's stable and not going to kill anyone directly, you need to head back to science. Now that you're back in science, all you need to do is find the anomaly vessel. <laughs> you simply left click your scanner to the anomaly vessel. I also recommend turning the server off and on. It's not always required, but sometimes it is, and it's just better to be safe than sorry. You can always pull out the scanner and press Z to see this menu. It would be making 17 points. So if I go to an RD server, yes, indeed, you can see that every second you are gaining 17 points. The point output is directly related to how severe the anomaly is. The higher severity and the worse the state it is in, the more points you'll generate, but obviously it incurs more danger to the crew and yourself. I'm not going to go into the specifics of how to handle every anomaly or how to 
directly contain them or the best ways to deal with them. That is not necessary for a beginner's guide. There are two more things I'm going to cover. I will cover machine upgrades next. This map specifically will actually come with two, with three super capacitors. Interestingly enough, anomaly vessels only require capacitors. So I will show you how to machine upgrade. Most machines in the game can be upgraded. If you shift click them and you see this arrow on it, that means it can be upgraded. This one specifically can have its point output upgraded. So in order to upgrade a machine, you first need to take it apart, which means you have to screwdriver it and then crowbar it and crowbar it again. And now you've taken apart the machine. Now to upgrade it, you just put the board back in first, put every other piece back in. And since I'm going to be putting in three upgraded capacitors, one, two, three, you put the three good ones in and then keep filling it until it says there's nothing left to do other than screwdriver it. Bam. Now we have an upgraded anomaly vessel that's 30% better at point output. And these are advanced capacitors or tier three parts. Parts go from tier one to four. The only way to obtain tier four parts is through salvage. So you're not really ever going to get your hands on them, or at least not often. So now this is generating 17 points, but 30% additional. That is one of the most useful machine upgrades you can do. As you can see, it is generating significantly more points without even having to up the severity on the anomaly. As you can see, it is still 17. Upgrading the proto lathe is also a very important upgrade, but that is also again for more completionist stuff. The final thing I would cover is how tier three researches work. A tier three research is otherwise known as a main discipline. Once you get through all the tiers of a research so for example once you get 75 percent of tier one and 75 percent of tier two you'll now get tier three if i unlock tier three industrial which is blue space storage blue space storage my main discipline is now industrial meaning i can no longer get the tier threes of the other branches as you can see i didn't get the tier three option it will stay tier two you can use the tech disk terminal to print out one random blueprint of any tech in the game and yes you can get duplicates but this is one of the only ways you can get the other tier three techs is by gambling or you can just gamble in general i mean gambling is kind of fun i believe that is everything that is worth covering in a basics guide and it fully explains how to do the job and how to get started i did not explain any min max properties like for example for anomalies you can research the uh chimp hand cannon which is just a mobile ape, meaning you don't have to drag around the uh, ape for all your anomalies. I also didn't mention the RD using teleporters to help you out. But this is a very general basic guide and should help you get into science. And, well, it's up to date, so that's uh, pretty important too.